Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for um, this opportunity to share what, uh, what we're doing the Open SDS project with you guys. So th let me explain a little about uh, what the Open SDS project is about. It's actually a Linux Foundation project that a lot of people don't know about. Okay, but so so that's why I'm here to talk to you guys. And the um, Soda is actually a rebranding of the project or a change of the pro transformation of the project from OpenSS to Soda. And I'll explain later why we are doing that. And, um, it, and part of the reason is because, I mean, as what the title says, is we are going onto the path to data topic. Okay. Um, a lot of people may not have heard of uh, Future Wave. So Future Wave is actually in the news every day and CNN and so on. So Future Wave is the US uh, R&D arm of our power. So I'm based in uh, Silicon Valley, the, the US R and the arm of uh, Huawei. So um, if you look at this picture, um, this shows it, um, all the kinds of uh, popular applications that um, I mean everybody runs nowadays are big data, IoT, machine learning, and AI. Um, and uh, the data that you have usually is I mean either stored on premise or in the cloud. And on the right hand side, your applications may be running on containers, uh, virtualization cloud, or, or even at the edge. And in between, the data that you have, I mean, it needs to be stored, it needs to be provisioned, it needs to be protected. And for, I mean, things like big data and so on, it needs to be transformed, it needs to be cleansed and so on. So the problem with this picture is that actually a lot of these solutions that you have in there are spot solutions. So um, I was giving this same talk in KubeCon uh, in San Diego, and after this talk, uh, got a person from uh, Southwest Airlines came up to me as uh, data solutions architect. He's saying this is the exact problem that they're having in Southwest Airlines. So the problem here is that there are a lot of spot solutions, and the difficulty actually in this picture is not about like how to, how you transform the data or how you I mean provide the uh, replication for the data. The problem here is how do you connect all these different pieces of solutions together? Okay, that's the key problem. Okay, so you have all these silos solutions. The, so the, the vision that we are trying to do in SODA is actually to um, create a seamless uh, integrated framework that connects all these different pieces together. So your, the data that's on your left hand side, I mean, whether it's stored in, in the cloud or on the premise, can be, I mean, protected, can be replicated, can be transformed seamlessly for the applications that run on the right side. So, and besides that, uh, in order to do that actually, you need things like telemetry, you need things, a standardized way of uh, collecting data for telemetry, um, automation and orchestration to move the, different, uh, the data to the different flows, uh, intelligence and AI to make your operations more efficient, a multi-cloud to connect to, I mean, either, I mean your um, different, I mean, AWS cloud, Google cloud, and so on. So, um, the, the, so the vision, I mean, actually is to allow you to store, run, and any data anywhere. And that's what um, data autonomy is about. So, take for instance, uh, Kubernetes, um, the CSI, I mean, container storage interface, what it tries to do there is actually to try to standardize uh, the ways uh, Kubernetes uh, connects to storage. So the, the problem with this uh, solution or with this standard is that through this standard interface, each, each storage developer, I mean, each storage vendor um, create their own kind of a solution. And the solution itself is kind of like a micro ecosystem. Um, you have like your data, I mean, in vendor A that sits in, within vendor A, and you may be able to replicate data to the cloud in AWS, but the data in the cloud um, can only be recognized by the same vendor solution. So similarly, I mean, vendor B solution, vendor C solution, I mean, each is actually, actually still a silo. So it does not solve the problem of trying to actually uh, remove this uh, silo kind of a solution, I mean silo kind of problem, okay. Uh, what SODA tries to do is that it actually um, sits in between CSI and storage. So it kind of abstracts the storage from the uh, 
Kubernetes, uh, all these uh, pods and applications. So, and in a way, it, besides unifying the orchestration, which allows you to actually move data across different kinds of uh, vendor storage, it also unifies the data that's in the cloud. So that each, it's not about each vendor putting the, its data in the cloud, it's about all the data that you have on premise, no matter what, who's been, I mean, where, where the data uh, comes from, it goes into this cloud and it can be accessed by anybody. Okay. So that's, that's the um, unified orchestration part that we try to do there. And then besides that, the telemetry, intelligence, and all the cloud that, that we have in there. So Soda um, tries to make data <coughs> mobile for Kubernetes. So this is the uh, framework for Soda. So a lot of uh, projects, um, CNCF, I mean, right now is the biggest uh, project um, in not only Linux Foundation, it's probably the world right now. So everybody's talking about cloud native, um, Kubernetes, cloud native, and so on. But our problem is not just the soft cloud native. I mean, there are a lot of enterprises out there that are still using OpenStack. They're using VMware, using bare metal, kind of all stuff. So, so Soda's goal, I mean, is to be able again to enable data mobility for uh, for any kind of uh, applications. So it's a data mobility framework. And this picture is all what you see is that um, the blue parts here are actually the projects that have been um, developed by the OpenSS project. So, so the OpenSS project, the main um, the main mission. Uh, Initially, it was just to connect the different kinds of uh, storage together to act as a control plane to, um, so that it can connect to um, different kinds of storage and um, allows like OpenStack Kubernetes and so on to, to use the, uh, the different kinds of storage. But again, in Soda itself, the goal is actually to enable data mobility. So, so we are, I mean, we are going to be uh, working with like creating a project for like the Edge, okay, to enable data mobility between the edge and the um, premise or the edge that cloud. Um, um, the Soda Flake is actually an in cloud kind of management module, and the uh, data store uh, project this is something that uh, we this in um, preliminary uh, kind of our discussion. So, so and I'll, I'll talk about more about it in the next slide. So. Um, so the, um, the data store part, what we're trying to do is actually to uh, create a data lake kind of solution for, for data streaming, for data analytics, for um, machine learning and AI. So um, the possibility of this came together because um, in the OpenSDS project, what we did was that we created a multi-cloud kind of data controller. And China Unicom, which is um, the big, I mean, it's probably the second biggest uh, telecom company in uh, China. They have an internal project, uh, an internal solution uh, that they use for object storage that leverages um, the Ceph um, storage backend to allow them to, through a single interface, be able to scale, um, multi scale, scale the backend using multiple kind of uh, Ceph clusters. So, so. Um, China Unicom has donated the uh, IT project to, to Soda. And what we are doing right now is to integrate the, this uh, interface together with the OpenSDS multi-cloud data control project, which is uh, the Gelato project. And with, with this, we are able to do something that's uh, very useful to our end users. So what it does is that it allows through a single kind of interface be able to um, let you store your data either on premise or in the cloud, and you can control it through any kind of uh, data policies. Okay, and some of the other things that we're going to do is um, um, there's going to be a search engine. There's a company that we are talking to that has a search engine that they are open sourcing. So, so we're also very happy for them to be joining joining Soda. So I like, but I can't mention the, the name of the company yet. So with that, I mean, it's gonna make this uh, whole um, soda as a you know data mobility for any kind of any kind of framework. I mean, it's gonna really make it come true. Okay. 
So um, the, the other use cases that we have um, are like for Yahoo Japan. Um, they have like uh, 52 clusters of uh, OpenStack that they use um, like the Cinder and the, the Manila project for the uh, file provisioning. And then the, uh, and, and also they are adding more, I mean, for cloud native, I mean, they are, they are starting to have deploy Kubernetes cluster. And they are in fact migrating some of the uh, OpenStack clusters to Kubernetes also. So, so the Linux form, I mean, the um, Soda, what it does is that it actually consolidates all these different kinds of uh, different different silos into one. And then with this, uh, the different open, I mean, the op different OpenStack or Kubernetes clusters can actually um, use the kind of storage as a unified pool, and resources can be allocated and reallocated very easily. Um, this multi-cloud use case is by Entity Communications. The, the, the use case is like, um, they, they use AWS, I mean AWS is a partner of Entity Communications. And for the, to support that, they develop a, a cloud controller for AWS to actually move data between their data center to, to the AWS cloud and AWS cloud to some, some remote sites. So, but the problem with that is that then they have the silent partner, uh, Google, and then a new, uh, another partner, Microsoft. So, with that, everything that every single cloud uh, partner that, it, they, that came in, they have to, you know, do the same thing over and over again. And, uh, and besides that, what they have to do is also like, if you have a <laughs> service, they have to like, redevelop things for it. So that's why, I mean, Entity communications is actually leveraging Soda to try to try to solve this problem. Okay, so all these use cases that I talk about, they are they are not in production yet. Okay, there are things that we are doing for for this uh, end users, but they are not they are being tested, but not not in production yet. So um, another use case is um, Toyota the the data lifecycle um, kind of a need. So what they do is that the, the autonomous vehicle that they have, I mean the sensors, the sensor data that they have, they want to move it to the edge. And they need a way of like moving the data between the edge to the to the data center for for primary storage. So at the edge they do things like um they do, do things like um, high performance kind of computing, you know. And then in in the primary storage they do things like machine learning and AI kind of stuff. And then as the data, and the data that stored there, they may store it for like half a year. And after half a year, they want to move it to like secondary storage. Okay, and the secondary storage, I mean, they're going to use it for like long-term kind of machine learning and stuff. And this, um, they're going to store it for like, I, I can't really remember the period, but it's about two years, if I remember correctly. And then after two years, the data is like too old, so they, all they need to do is to archive it either to the local pool storage or to the cloud archive. So, and then the data that they have to, that they have to archive and store, retain over there is actually like a period of like 15 years, which is how long they expect the power to last. Okay. Um, so, um, this picture, I mean, Openness is, is supported by all these different companies. Um, the, and as we move from OpenSDS to Soda, the, um, because the original goal of OpenSDS again was just to act, I mean to define a control plane for storage. So, but Soda scope has, I mean, has grown a, a lot more than what OpenSDS is doing, and that's why we are doing that, doing the transformation. And most of these companies that you see here will we'll continue on to solar, but some will not. Okay. So the mission um, of SODA is to, I mean, foster our ecosystem of open source data management and uh, storage software, again, for data autonomy, um, create a neutral platform for cross-project collaboration. Because we see a lot of, uh, part of the problem out there is that there are a lot actually a lot of uh, great open source projects out there, but each is actually playing within them, themselves. And they, for for instance, like Ceph itself, if you want to replicate some of the stuff like open EBS, it doesn't, doesn't work at all. So so we want to act as a neutral platform to actually foster that kind of uh, collaboration. 
And ultimately, what we, we want to do is actually to, to serve our end users to provide quality end to end kind of solutions for them. Um, the goals of open source projects so is going to be open in any way. Um, real, again, uh, the, uh, the difference between our project and a lot of other projects out there is that our roadmaps are actually driven by our end users. I mean, the requirements come from them and we prioritize the roadmap according to, to the requirements from the end users. And really, um, the, this part of, 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 is actually about SODA ready. This is a certification program that a lot of our, our end users are asking for. So in, in the existing um, world, when they want to purchase any, any kind of uh, storage or data kind of solutions, they need to specify like pages of you know, specs and requirements for the, the product or the solution itself. So what they hope for is like in future when they want to order some, I mean, want to make a purchase order, all they need to specify is that it's going to be sold already. So sold already is about conformance, it's about compliance, interoperability, and so on. And then also we will come up with um, a, a specs for like how to certify the service providers and also to train administrators and developers. This is no different from like any of the uh, other Linux Foundation kind of certification program. So this, this is something that we are, we are hoping to do. And then the govern, governance model, um, this again is similar to a lot of the um, Linux Foundation projects. Um, the main, the main steering commi um, committees, the advisory board, the technical steering committee, the support or end user advisory committee, and the outreach committee. And, and then the um, architecture work group that will oversee the collaboration or the design across all the different projects. The quality work group that will actually um, define that um, solar ready kind of program. And the different six for, uh, across the different technologies and industries. And also the regional committees, like in Japan, actually we have a pretty healthy community here, so so we do have things like that. Um, so the timeline for for the project, I mean, we we kind of started open as this back in 2016. Our growth was not as spectacular as we hoped. I mean, like like the uh, the Hyperledger project and so on. So, but we we do hope that this is a new start for us. Um, the, so um, we do. We are we're having a formation meeting actually tomorrow at uh, the Sony HQ across across the street, and then we're going to have a soda forum, which is uh, which is being held here in room four hundred six. So if you are free, you can uh, come and join us. And then uh, the the first release of the uh, so first release under the soda, which is um, that has been developed um, since the uh, OpenSDS project. Days is our title, and actually they will have the uh, integration between uh, the uh, S3 uh, multi-cluster self project by uh, China Ecom and uh, and what OpenSS is doing. And I just verified with uh, the CTO of the China Ecom that this is actually a project that they I mean that's in production and is currently storing like uh, four petabytes of data. So so this is a really reliable. Kind of and um, in Q1, um, we'll be releasing our, our second release of uh, Soda. So we have every quarter, there's going to be a release. So Soda Lake is the, it's not really a, a fixed project name yet, but we're calling it Soda Lake for now. It will, it will start stop running streaming. Um, and we're going to do a Soda forum in Amsterdam, QCon. So, and then um, in Q2 itself, the SODA ready, we expect the specifications draft to come together. And then uh, Q3, uh, the main software release will be, uh, we'll, do, we'll do another forum in uh, Shanghai, QCon. And then um, the Edge, SODA Edge will come in uh, Q3 itself. And then together with like the uh, search engine, the Hadoop support, and then data life cycle. So all of it comes together. And then uh, finally, at the end of the year, we're going to do um, another forum, sort of, sort of forum in uh, India, and then also in uh, Boston, US. And the release that we have, I mean, the, the sort of thing we expect it to be, to be able to support AI and machine learning kind of uh, applications. And so um, this is the um, 
the, the program for the uh, soda forum. Um, it will start tomorrow afternoon at um, two thirty here. So if you're interested, um, there's a you can register there. Maybe a bit hard to read, but um, bit.ly slash soda forum nineteen. Okay, if you just just go there or just come look for me. Okay, I'll give you a free ticket right away. Um, so so these are the different speakers, and most of these speakers actually come from companies that will be participating in the project. Okay. And in the evening, I mean, if you can join us for the forum, do come and join us for the uh, evening reception. Uh, this starts from 6.45 until 9 o'clock. Okay. We have a lot of great food. Um, we, uh, like what I was saying, we're going to have a formation meeting tomorrow morning. So this will be held in uh, Sony uh, headquarters. If anybody is interested in like your representing a company to join, um, actually we already have a full house um, of representatives from over twenty companies. But if you're interested, do let me know. We'll try to squeeze you in. Okay. So so this is kind of like the high level kind of agenda, and the high level of this is actually at the end we get a tour, get a tour of the Sony Square in the building. Okay. Um, so the. OpenSS has done a lot of, uh, you know, activities around the world, from Barcelona to India to Tokyo. Tokyo, we come and do a lot of things here, um, China and so on. So um, we welcome you guys to to join us. I mean, to help us with this uh, data autonomy kind of uh, movement. So thank you very much, Arigato.